Hello Stow community, welcome to another Starbase UGC video tutorial. Uh, this tutorial is really part three of branching dialogue. Really it's part two of branching dialogue. Part two is more of a triggers tutorial, but um, I've finally gotten around to messing with branching dialogue a bit more, and I wanted to do a puzzle together. It's a pretty neat trick. It's um, something that many of you probably have already figured out, uh, but I wanted to learn it after I played the mission Audacious Aground, and it was a really cool part of the mission because it was a puzzle where I walked up to a console and the console told me a clue, and that clue corresponded with the first number of a code. And the more clues I got, the more code I had to where I could enter in a four-digit password to make the mission progress. And what was interesting about it was there were four right answers, but there was an endless amount of numbers, it seemed like at the time. So I could have put anything in, um, and that was what was neat to me. It was something that I couldn't just click through and guess. So let me show you what I did here. Um, I'm in a room. There's a force field at the door, and there's a attendant blocking the door. I can talk to her and she'll say inner access code and there's the first number of my access code so let's say that I'm just guessing around I'll say two she says enter the second digit one enter the third digit uh, one access denied so I could play around with this for a long time just kinda guessing uh, guessing and not getting the code and I just did this with three numbers, one, two, three, and three different combinations. So there are 27 possible different combinations that I can use to access the hall to get the force field to come down. And I really don't want to take the time to just sit here and guess one of the 27 codes. So what I'll do instead is go get the clues and I'll leave it up to you how you want the player to get the clues but once I get the clues I know that the code to enter is 331 so then I can come back and I can say 331 she says access granted continue now the force field is down and I can progress to the next part of the mission Okay, so I'm going to actually walk you through this. I'll show you what the branching dialogue looks like and an overview here. It's not going to make much sense until I really get into explaining what I did. I do want to explain a basic. Think, think about this as two branches, two big branches of a tree. And the th one at the top is the first answer the first question. So enter the first digit of the access code. Then there are two branches. If the player gets the first digit wrong, they enter into a different tree or a different branch of the tree that's going to end in failure. It's going to end in this stop sign because they entered the wrong number. But if they get the first number right, then they're on a different branch where they can make another choice. If they get that one right, then they can make another choice and another choice. But if at any time they get something wrong, they get thrown to the fail branch. And let's just do this together because I think it's, it's a bit complicated, even though it's a little basic, but it will help if I walk you through it. So I'm going to go to the dialog tab and I'm going to delete the dialog. I guess I have to do the, the story tab. Going to delete the dialog and put in a talk to contact. The mission text will be um, access room. The actor will be the attendant, the NPC I put in. And I'm going to change her around. Um, 
versus what I did in the example, she's going to say uh, enter the first digit. No, I'm going to change that. Do you wish to enter? And I'll just leave it to say continue. Let's go to the advanced dialog editor. Let's leave that one the same. We'll put in a new prompt and she'll say enter the first digit of the access code. And I'll do three buttons. And the author of Audacious and Ground, he did this with ten buttons, which amazed me. He must have he must have been messing around with this for hours. Um, I'm going to keep it pretty simple, so we'll do one. Oh. One, two, and three. Okay, so I want the code to be 331, which means that if they hit three, they'll proceed on to a good path, a good branch, in which they'll be asked to enter the second digit and that will allow them to have a choice of one two or three And we said the code is 331. <clears throat> so first they're going to pick 3. And then if they know the code, they'll pick another 3, which will proceed on to enter the third digit. I'll make three buttons there. One, two, three. The code was 331, so one is the right answer. That will let the attendant say access granted. And we'll leave that to say success. For the minute, for the moment, we'll leave all the other things to say success too. So we have the good tree laid out here for the right answers. Um, now let's go to the bad tree. So the first prompt is let's see if I can enlarge this for you. First prompt is enter the first digit of the access code. So if they enter the, a wrong digit, which is one or two, let's just put them on a different path, but let's not make the player know they're on a different path. So enter the second digit. And if they pick the two instead of the three, they'll go to the same prompt. So if they get that first number wrong, they're going to be on this branch. Now let's add in another dialog. And it will say, oops, before we do that, let's add in options. One, two, three. Okay. If they're already in this tree, they're going to fail because they picked the wrong first number. So it really doesn't matter where this first dialog box is. It could be under the two or it could be under the three, but it does need to say um, enter the third 
digit and the player shouldn't be able to tell the difference between this box on the bad tree and the good box on the good tree because they're going to look the same. So one, two, and three. And just like with the first one, um, regardless of what they pick since they're on the bad tree after making a mistake, they're just going to go to the same prompts regardless of what numbers they pick because they got something wrong. Okay. Now we'll do one final prompt here. And she will say access denied. That will lead to failure and just like before all the other options on this bad tree will lead to failure okay so there's the bad tree if the player ends up on the bad tree they're going to have to start over at some point but they they're not going to know which number they got wrong because over here on the good tree we're also going to set the wrong options to take them to the bad tree. So let's say they get the first three right. Um, well, if they don't pick the second three, remember the code is 331. If they pick 31 or 32, then we're just going to send them right where the other ones send them, which is to this failed. Um, failed tree which asks for the second digit or the third digit and likewise let's say they get the first two digits right they go three three but then they don't know the third one and it and they say two or they say three well then they're going to go to the same fail if I can get there going to go to that one and I don't have to do that twice I can just set this arrow to go to this arrow all right so that is my puzzle let's uh, let's see if I did it right Oh, and the other thing that I did here was I put in the force field and the attendant, and the force field is set to become invisible if the objective complete is um, talk to contact. And if you don't know how to do that, please watch some of my triggers tutorials um, where that's explained. Um, okay, let's see if this works. Okay, here I am on a map. Um, you probably hear a baby screaming in the background. Don't worry about her. She's okay. Um, here I am. I'll go to the attendant. I can talk to the UGC contact. And she'll say, do you wish to enter? I say, continue. Enter the first digit of the access code. If I don't know that 3 is the right answer, I'll pick 2. And that puts me on the bad tree. So whatever I pick here, even if it's the right second number of the access code, it's not going to lead me to success because I've already got the first digit wrong. So we said it was 331. I just picked 231. Access denied because I got that first number wrong. But if I get the first number right, say 3, 3, then I get the third number wrong. Access denied. So I have to know the code out of the exact code out of 27 different combinations. And, you know, if you have more than three options here and three, um, three digits, that's an even greater possibility of different codes. Um, I just kept it at three to keep the tutorial simple. So do you wish to enter? I'll say three, three, one. Access granted there we go 
And okay, the force field's still up. Oh, you know what? I think I forgot to set the force field to Right, because I deleted the previous objective, I have to specify the new objective. And that's access the room, which is my code name for talk to the contact. So once that's done, then the force field will disappear after I talk to the NPC contact. Okay, I think that's this tutorial for now. I hope that I can do some more complicated puzzles in the future as I continue to learn branching dialogue and to experiment with it. Um, thanks again to Agents Audacious to Ground for helping me to brainstorm this, um, and I hope this is helpful to others. Please leave feedback on the forums or the blog. Please also leave requests for future tutorials. Thank you.